Hello everybody, the History Guy here. As promised in one of my earlier videos, I am starting a new series today. Uh, I had originally done a series as the Nation of Israel in the modern day mod for Hearts of Iron 4. And I did a couple of episodes and then they updated Hearts of Iron 4 and the mods would no longer work. And when the mods were finally updated again, uh, there were some glitches and my territory was all over the place. I had a part of my Israeli territory was in Greece, part was in Korea. Uh, just couldn't go on with the series. So I've decided since that one did seem to be pretty popular that I'm going to go ahead and do a new series as Israel. But rather than start in the year 2000, I'm going to start with the modern day. And that means starting on January 20th, 2017, the day that Donald Trump becomes president of the United States. Now, I'm leaving politics out of this completely. I want to appeal to a broader audience than that. I do not care what side of the aisle you are, are uh, you are on or what country you are from. I'm glad you're watching this. I'm going to be Israel. Benjamin Netanyahu is the conservative prime minister of Israel. As you can see, we've got uh, China, Russia with Vladimir Putin. We've got Angela Merkel in Germany. We've got Theresa May in the United Kingdom. We've got uh, Japan, France, and many other countries. But I will be the nation of Israel. Now, um, we're going to dive right into this and see what happens. I've never played from 2017 before on this mod. I've only played through the mod a few times uh, just to kind of get a little bit of a feel for it. So I have absolutely no idea what to expect. Uh, this is just going to be kind of a journey. And I'm going to do one episode a day of this. So if you find yourself watching one of these episodes, the mo most recent one, and I try to upload these in the morning, uh, chances are I won't be recording the next one until late in the evening or the following morning. So if you want to offer some input into the direction you think I should go, let's make this interactive. So if you have suggestions, if you say, hey, why don't you do this? I'll try it if I can. So uh, I want to make this interactive. I want to make this fun. So we're going to see what happens. And with any game of Hearts of Iron, the first several minutes, probably a good bit of this first episode is going to be dedicated toward choosing the initial direction I go with my country and where I want to go with it. So obviously Israel is a very small country. It's surrounded by people who aren't necessarily their best of friends. Um, I wouldn't exactly call them enemies in all cases either. Jordan, for example, very moderate country, um, gets a, has great relationships with Western nations, uh, has, has a great king. I, I just, uh, without getting into politics of anything, I, I, I love King Abdullah. I think he's a cool guy. Uh, and, and I think he has a lot to offer to his nation and to the world. But as you can see, we've got the Islamic State here um, with a portion of it uh, as part of Syria. A uh, portion of it is in what is Iraq. And you have up here, you have the, the Kurdish uh, state kind of independent of things. So there's a lot going on around here. I have absolutely no, no idea how it's all going to go down. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, the first thing first, obviously, Israel is not a nation that produces a lot. Um, so I've definitely got uh, a real issue when it comes to trade because I, I produce a little bit of oil, a little, little bit of an aluminum, no rubber, no chromium. I do produce some steel and next to no tungsten. So one of the early things I'm going to have to do is work on my industry, my infrastructure. I've got to get myself to the place where I'm a little more self-sustaining and not relying so heavily on trade from everybody. Uh, obviously, I've got some manpower, but I'm a small nation. Um, I think Israel's total population, I don't know if it says on here what that is, but this is not a country with a lot of people. So um, what I do have going for me, even with a small nation, is that, uh, okay, so there we go. Uh, population is 10.2 million total. Uh, this is a nation that has mandatory military service. It's service by requirement. And so that does mean that even though I have a small population, I have a decent amount of manpower. So uh, at some point, I may end up in a war. My goal is not to go looking for a war to try and expand my territory, but I do want to be in a position where I'm prepared for that. So let's just take a little bit of a look here at the national focuses because this is where you really determine the direction of your country and how that impacts the world around you. So there's a lot of great diplomatic options here. I can choose an aggressive policy, which means I'm going to try and take the, the West Bank and Gaza. I could even put claims on Jordan, on the Sinai, and end up basically having wars against Lebanon, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, all the nations around me. Or I can choose peaceful coexistence, 
which gives me some very different options, including the possibility of an alliance with the Middle East. So a lot of choices to make there. But over here, you have choices that have to do with industry and investing in the military. Right now, I'm going to focus on, uh, and then there's domestic policies here as well. It looks like a lot. So there's a ton of options, really. There really is. Uh, I could even go full Jewish um, uh, religious leadership, or I could even go the route of becoming a uh, Muslim state. In the meantime, I think I'm going to invest in industry. I'm going to start focusing on revitalizing my economy, building that up as best I can. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to focus with my factories on uh, being able to produce some of my own products here. Now, I don't have a lot of free areas to build factories right now, but I'm going to invest so that I can build more eventually. Uh, so we're going to build a couple tungsten factories. We're going to build some rubber factories here and maybe even one for chromium so I can stop relying quite so much on the rest of the world. Uh, naval dockyards, I've got some available. So for now, we're just going to worry about some convoys. Eventually, I'll start focusing on some real military. But uh, in the meantime, let's go with some armor divisions. And I'm going to focus pretty heavily on armor early on here. Uh, but I'm not going to produce a lot. I'm basically, basically going to stockpile a lot of things for the time being. Uh, we'll go ahead and do some infantry brigades as well. Not full divisions, but brigades. And then that will give us kind of a, a focus on where we need to build as far as uh, equipment production goes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just put all of these folks into one army for now. There's only 13 divisions. And we'll make that just a garrison that basically is responsible for the whole of the nation of Israel. I think that's all of my territories. If not, it's good enough. There we go. All right, so then they're just going to kind of garrison. And then the last thing I need to do is assign my military factories and look at equipment production. I need anti-tank. Oh, there we go. So we need some infantry equipment. We're going to need anti-tank. What else? Artillery mechanized, light mechanized. So pretty much a little bit of everything. Artillery, motorized, support equipment, and main battle tank. So basically, I'm going to pretty much have just one factory on each of these things with a few extra here and there. Support equipment is the only one I got left. There we go. Um, you can kind of see what I need more of in all these different places. And obviously, I do not have the industry to be able to produce all of what I need. All right, so I guess we'll work on main battle tanks for now. All right, so now we can see what we need as far as resources go that we need to trade with, and then we can start this game off. So we're going to have to trade with, you know what? Honestly, I think that trading with someone a little closer, like Saudi Arabia, actually makes more sense than trading with the United States. And we need some chromium. We'll get that from Russia. So trying to kind of be a good sport here and spread the wealth as far as who I trade with, who I interact with. And I'm trying to sim here, but there we go. So one thing about the modern day mod that I found that's a little different than some of the other mods, and that's that from the very beginning, you definitely have a bit of an issue with lag. It does sim pretty slowly compared to other uh, games on Hearts of Iron 4, which starting out at the beginning, it goes pretty fast until you get closer to the war time and you have people producing a lot more units and there's a lot more going on but obviously in this case with a modern day world we've already got a lot going on so all right i forgot about one more thing and that is research uh but let's take a look here first of all rockets launched from palestine this is something that israel faces and uh palestine has launched rockets toward our civilian centers in israel the damage is still being assessed in the meantime we d we need to decide how to respond one of three options will happen um, send them a strongly worded letter. No, I don't think we'll do that. 
Time to send a message. Commence all out bombardment of suspected sites. Now that could anger my friends uh, or my, my neighbors. So I got to be cautious doing that too much. But in this case, I'll go ahead and let it happen. And uh, we're going to gain a little bit of a unity hit there. All right, so we got to do some technology. Like I said, I want to focus early on with uh, infrastructure, industry. Uh, you can see it's 2017, and I've got some year 2000 uh, research that I can be doing here. So that's definitely the way I want to go. We can get a bonus on production efficiency. We can get a bonus on construction speed, which is good since we're building some factories. Uh, here's factory output and max factories in a state. Again, very good. And again, here's uh, resource gain efficiency and it enables the building of a uh, level two uh, chromium and tungsten factory. So those are all related to what I'm trying to focus on right now, which is building up my industry, my infrastructure. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, now, you know what? I don't think I'm going to do anything with uh, military exercises right now. Satellite intel shows that the launch sites of the rockets have taken a direct hit with minimal civilian casualties. This is unlikely to draw diplomatic back backlash. Excellent news. So I, uh, I didn't kill civilians. That's always the goal. Hopefully we don't kill civilians. We kill the people responsible and no one more. Looks like the Islamic State's kind of taking a hit. Between the Kurds and the Iraqis, they seem to be minimizing Islamic State's territory at the moment. And they're focusing on an air force right now, which is interesting. I want to try and work on a little better um, relationship with uh, King Abdullah there in Jordan. So let's go ahead and improve relations with him. And let's kind of take a look at the rest of the world and what's going on around the world here. Ah, the Islamist Party Islamist has been put in power in Kurdish Islamic State. So uh, that's interesting. So the Kurdish Islamic State has taken control there, which is... Uh, so they have a, a truce with the Islamic State. So it looks like they've actually gone the route of, instead of being a secular state, they've gone to... Uh, Islamic uh, rule there, which has ended their war with the Islamic State. So that's interesting that that's happening. Uh, I was starting to look and just see what, what's up in the United States, see what their focus is right now. Uh, go with the Saudis. So I'm curious to see what that means in their diplomacy tree here. I don't really see it. Because I don't know how many of these have already been researched. So obviously, go. oh, there it is. It's down here. All right, so what that is is, uh, oh, they, they get to side either with Iran or the Saudis in this one. So they've taken the side of the Saudis, which is pretty consistent with uh, what the United States would do in real life. Since the Saudis have been a country that we have worked with, worked with in the past. Uh, so Islamic State is now free to focus on Iraq since they no longer are at war with the Kurds. And you can see they're starting to grow some territory there. They're starting to conquer the nation of Iraq. All right, so research, all of these research are going to take a little while, uh, the better part of a year. So we're not likely to see any research breakthroughs in the first um first episode here. Ukraine took two states, uh, so they were at war up here, apparently, with Nova Russia, uh, which I'm not quite sure where they are, but let's go ahead and take a look at the world. 19% world tension right now. Current wars, we have the ISIS invasion of Iraq, which ISIS is about to win, and then you have the separate war with Syria, which is actually more evenly divided at the moment. So it looks like ISIS is about to defeat Iraq. All right, so I'm kind of zooming in and out, getting a feel for the controls a little bit here. So we're into February. Um, this is going to be one of those series that doesn't go real fast. It's only going to be probably a couple months per episode uh, just because of the speed at which this mod tends to sim. 
but there's so much that you can do here. There's so many choices available. And early on, not a lot's going to happen, but as I start to make these decisions and I start to get into some of my political and diplomatic decisions that I'll make, a lot is going to happen. But first, I need to build up my infrastructure before I can get to that point. Uh, one of the things that's going to happen, which is really nice in this tree, is that a couple of layers down here, the fourth one, is nationalizing oil production. That's going to allow me to get fifty production, uh, production of 50 oil in Israel, which is basically going to make me completely oil independent. Uh, and I won't have to trade for any oil whatsoever, at least not at first. Uh, diplomatic focus, I'm really not sure which direction I'm going to go yet with that. Uh, we'll, we'll give that one some time to kind of flesh out, and I'll decide once I'm in a stronger position and I see what's happening in the rest of the world, the direction that I want to go with diplomatic focus. But as I said, I'm, welcome, uh, I'm welcoming your input on that. So if I get three or four comments saying, hey, go the route of peaceful coexistence and nobody says anything otherwise, then maybe I'll go that way because that's what you want to see. Um, if I have a lot of people saying something else we'll go that route but you know i want this to be entertaining for you i want this to be fun for you to watch so please 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 uh, give me your input and let me know what you want to see and i'll try to make that happen unless i think it's a uh, just not at all what i want to do um and completely off the direction i want to go but i don't think that's going to happen because i really don't know what i want to do yet so pretty open to your suggestions we'll try to do like i said an episode a day whenever possible with this one um, but depending on what else I have going on, it might not go quite that much. So Iraq's been effectively split in two at this point. Um, it looks like the Islamic State has taken most of the nation now. They haven't taken Baghdad yet, but that war's all but over. You can see here, 95% uh, in favor of the aggressors. So I'm not quite sure what's going to happen once that war's over, if Islamic State's just going to take over Iraq. But that'll be quite interesting to see how the rest of the world reacts. And, you know, I'm really close to that. People forget how close these countries are because they're not that big. And there's not a lot of distance between the two. So um, going to be interesting to see how this is affected by the rest of the world. So there it is. Islamic terrorist mandate of Iraq was puppeted. So they basically allowed Iraq to keep its own territory, but as a puppet of the Islamic State. So, uh They'll probably turn their attention on Syria now. So we'll see how that goes. We'll probably get into, uh, at least into May, maybe go through the end of May on this first episode. And there's my first national focus, investing in industry. And that one uh, just gave us uh, two research bonuses for industry, which will be nice. A little political power bonus. And now we're going to go ahead and focus on revitalizing the economy, which is going to give me some building, slot fa uh, building slots and some civilian factories. So that's going to help me out a lot. Uh, I've already built my first factory, I believe, and now we're focused on the second one. Let's go ahead and look at trade for a minute and make sure that I'm not wasting any of my trade. Nope, everything looks pretty solid here. It's exactly where I need it to be, so... All right, we're into April now, 2017. And Syria actually uh, looking like they're having a little bit of success against the Islamic State. Um, let's see. Yeah, it's about 50-50 right now. So we'll, we'll watch that one closely and see how that all turns out. As with all of my series on games like Hearts of Iron, I do not have the music playing. Um, I apologize if, if you prefer that it was, but I find that when I watch videos of people doing commentary on a game like this, the music gets a little distracting. But um, definitely, if you're playing this game, use the soundtrack, because I, I feel like Paradox has some really good soundtracks on their games. And especially with this one, because there's so many mods available that you can add. And uh, when you play through it as World War II, I really highly suggest the the mod that allows you to add music from the scores of various war films and series like Band of Brothers and uh, Pearl Harbor, um, Saving Private Ryan. It's just awesome to play a World War II game and have that music playing in the background while you play. So I definitely suggest that uh, if you're playing. But oh boy. Okay, so Islamic State's starting to make some headway on Syria. If they end up taking Syria as well, uh, I'm, I'm going to have a real problem on my hands because I'm, I'm going to border them. I, I have this small border here with 
Syria, and if that ends up being the Islamic State, I'm going to have to seriously consider what I'm going to do there because they may turn their sights on me next. So I need to be prepared for that possibility. Um, let's go ahead and look at production and my recruitment. Got a long way to go to be able to get these guys in the field, and I don't have near the um, military factors factories to make that happen. So. Uh, hopefully the U.S. will get involved if that comes to it because I believe they probably have me guaranteed as far as my independence goes. Yeah, they do. Um, so if it, if it comes right down to it and I get invaded, I would imagine the U.S. would intervene on my behalf. But it's not looking good for Syria right now, I can say that. ISIS is now 23% in favor. So they may gobble up Syria as well. They've already puppeted Iraq. They've already basically um, conquered the Kurds and turned them into an Islamic state. So we're starting to see in this middle area of the Middle East here uh, a terrorist Islamic state uh, network of states forming. All right, we'll go to the end of May and then we'll wrap up this first episode. A lot going to be happening here, especially as I try to figure out what I'm going to have to do with ISIS because... Uh, they're about to be at my doorstep. Research-wise, we're still about two months away from these first breakthroughs, but all of those things are going to really start to help me. Let's go ahead and take a look and see if there's anything we can do government-wise that will be helpful. Um, I've got heavily regulated in, uh, immigration policy. I wonder if open country, that's going to give me a big increase in population, which might come in handy for manpower. Um, of course, I don't have the cost to do that yet, but I'm going to go to lightly regulated. That's going to increase my immigration, which is going to get me more manpower coming my direction. Uh, let's see what that gives me now per month. Um, so uh, a little over a thousand per month, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a good start and it's a it's a good help. And we'll, we'll eventually move even further in that direction to get an even higher increase in immigration. I think my next thing that I'll look at will be uh, maybe not trading quite so much. If I were to go to a closed, I don't think I can go to a closed economy. We're already pretty heavily conscripted, so not a lot that I can do there. So maybe just start focusing on political advisors. But that'll all be for the next episode, because this one's about to wrap up here in the next couple of days. And like I said, I'd uh, love to have your input on this. Love to hear what you have to say, what your suggestions are about the direction that I go with the nation of Israel. But this first episode's about to be in the books. I'm going to go ahead and probably delete my older series because I wasn't able to continue that one. And this one will replace that. But as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the support that my uh, page has been getting, my channel has been getting. And uh, check out some of my other videos. I'll put some links to some of those other things as well. And uh, if you'd hit that thumbs up button to like this video and you'd consider subscribing if you haven't done, all, done so already, I'd really appreciate that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow with another episode of Israel in the modern day mod of Hearts of Iron 4. Thanks for watching.